the time, pedestrians weave through the maze. Anthony, like so many we talked to, has witnessed terrible things. When he stepped out into the walkway to cross the street, the truck came and hit him and drug him. While one would hope this was an isolated incident, the triangle in front of the Barclay Center of Atlantic, Flatbush, and 4th Avenues has seen some 150 accidents already so far this year, including Monday when a cyclist was hit by an SUV and dragged some distance to his death. You can come here in any morning and you'll see people blocking the crosswalks and then the pedestrians have to move into the traffic, which that is, that's problematic. Wade Bailey is on the community board here and has been pleading for changes. In the time we watched the intersections, we saw cars nearly hitting other vehicles repeatedly, some while making U-turns. <laughs> Some drivers stranding themselves treacherously. More than the drivers, we worry about those on foot. It's been raining all day, so there aren't as many pedestrians out here, but still we can see what the problem is. Take a look right now. The light has already turned green for pedestrians. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six cars are still coming through the active crosswalk, and that's with a crossing guard We're trying to help. Just asking our cameraman to cross the street seems like a bit of an unfair request here. Three cars brushed us as we tried to cross, and we are hard to miss. The city's Department of Transportation says it's aggressively redesigning the area as it evolves, and that changes have led to a 60% drop in pedestrian injuries along that corridor, a 20% drop in crashes. Traffic agents have been a part of that solution, and luckily our arrival coincided with them coming off break. And here was the difference before break, the crosswalk jam, and with them at their posts, you can actually see the crosswalk. Bailey says if the city can change the truck traffic pattern here, even more lives would be saved. If you look at all this heavy truck traffic, that truck traffic more than likely is trying to shop, toll shop and not pay any tolls because the toll is like $100. Could changing the toll structure ease some of this? Many navigating this maze here want to give it a go. At the Barclays Center, Arthur Chien, Fox 5 News. All right, Arthur, thank you very much for that report. Joining me right now, my special guest tonight, he is a transportation expert. We call him Gridlock Sam. Sam Schwartz, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. you know, you're familiar with the situation. You've seen the story just now. Well, what is your reaction to this problem around the Barclays Center? This is a complex problem, mm. a problem that was created some 150 years ago when you had separate towns in Brooklyn. Oh. They had different grid systems mm -hmm. and they never matched up the grid system. So the grid of Fort Greene is completely different than Pops. So the problem has gotten worse. And you've got Flappish Avenue running as yeah. a diagonal between all of that. You have Atlantic Avenue, Fourth Avenue, you have 100,000 vehicles a day. And the situation has gotten exacerbated by the fact that we have more vehicles that are in neighborhoods like downtown Brooklyn than ever before. Now, DOT, as we know, is saying that they have worked to redesign that area, they have more traffic agents, it's helped some, but it's still a problem. What's needed there, in your opinion? What should they do? I think a number of things. Yeah. I talked about the problem 150 years ago. Another problem occurred in 1911, mm -hmm. and that's the Manhattan Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. They were all built with tolls. Once the tolls came off, and we put tolls on the two tunnels surrounding right, that, the right, Midtown right. Tunnel and the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. People drive through downtown Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Truckers drive through downtown Brooklyn, go across the Manhattan Bridge, go through Chinatown, out the Holland Tunnel for free. If they took the Verrazano Bridge to get to New Jersey, they could pay close to $100. There you are. So are. we have a, a tolling policy created by Mayor Gaynor in 1911 when mm -hmm. he removed the tolls. We've got to go back. Go back to those electronic right. tolls. Exactly. You also mentioned something about um, red light cameras that are important. That could help too. Yeah, I mean, part of the problem at this intersection is this is Park Slope. This is right. a slope from Grand Army Plaza straight down. Cars are really hitting high speeds, and some of those cars are going right through the red light. Mm -hmm. And you've got lots of pedestrians that are crossing at that location. Red light cameras have been shown to be incredibly effective at cutting down on red light running, but they also do a second thing. People drive more slowly when they know there's a red light camera. They're afraid to get caught. So there's a combination of design 
and other strategies that could be used, enforcement and red light cameras. All right, quickly, we know that there are some other problems. We could talk about this for a long time, you know, Canal Street and some of those other areas, uh, similar situations. But bottom line here, people, motorists, pedestrians, really should be very, very careful out there. Yeah, I think you're, if you're in a place like Flatbush Avenue, Atlantic Avenue, we have a very long crosswalk, yeah. especially across Atlantic Avenue. Anytime an intersection is a diagonal, mm -hmm. that should trigger something uh, in your mind. If it's not a right angle, but it's at a diagonal, you've got a longer crossing, it's more dangerous. Well, let's be safe out there. Sam Schwartz, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good information, come back again, because we need your help Absolutely. too. Absolutely, right? good ideas. Thanks, Sam. All right, fresh oyster.